Welcome to the Aragon region of Spain, a land where rugged mountains meets fertile valleys and ancient history collides with modern charm. Perched along the banks of the Ebro River in northeastern Spain, Zaragoza is a captivating blend of past and present. From its majestic Moorish palaces to its lively tapas bars, this city invites you on a journey through time. Just 20 kilometers away is the Circuito Internacional de Zuera, a familiar track to many and a new track for some. 15 immense corners and rapid straights make this one of the fastest tracks we visit this year, with top speeds reaching a staggering 136 kilometers per hour. With around 200 drivers registered into round one of the IAMI Euro Series across the three categories, mini, juniors and seniors, this year is set to be better than ever. Most of the field this weekend has got themselves warmed up at this year's exciting Winter Cup from Valencia. But this isn't a one-off weekend. This is a championship. A bad weekend here isn't the end of the world, but consistency is needed to become Miami Euro Series champion. The mini drivers starting the ages of around about 8 to 12 years old and 47 of those drivers entered into this weekend. 13 nationalities from around the world coming together in the Mini X30 categories. The engines, the displacement, 59cc, only 10 horsepower, but trust me, they're very, very quick. The minimum weight, 110 kilograms. That is cart and driver. All drivers need to meet that minimum weight of the cart when they come in from qualifying that's the most important part the tires that they use in this weekend they've only had to use the dry set the comet k1d m's they did have the wets available to them but they didn't need them two sets of uh, dry two sets of wets have used over the entire weekend and you'll find that a lot of them have saved a completely unused set of tyres for this weekend. The championship standings as it stands after all the qualifying heats and of course the super heats. Zianek Babacek is your current championship leader with 10 championship points. Sayer there with the nine. Then it's Romeo Mello, uh, Bruno Priam, Austin Newstead and Zach Green with the, or the Will Green I should say, uh, with the five uh, championship points to his name. The drivers will make their way out to the circuit now for the start of their final. But a reminder of what these drivers have done over the course of the weekend. Why has Zenit Babacek been on that top spot? Well, he qualified seventh on Friday. He's had two second places and a race win. But in the super heat, he got a second as well. Six points maximum to his name. He puts himself on that top spot for this race. Jarlis Sayer, he qualified second. He has had two third place finishes and a race win. He also finished second in his one. He had eight points, which was joint with Romeo Mello. He qualified fifth on Friday, two second places and a fourth, but he won his super heat. That's what puts him there third on the grid for this one. He'll have Bruno Priam starting alongside. Bruno Priam not having the best qualifying for him. Qualified 12th on Friday, but had two, well, had a third place, a fifth place, and then a race win. He also won his super heat. He starts on a fantastic spot there. Newstead, drama for Newstead. Qualified well, third place, a race win, second, but then got a penalty in his third race. That put him down a little bit in the order. He had to fight back, but he starts this one on that third row of the grid with Will Green alongside. Into the tram lines, are we going? First time of asking. Yes, we are. It is green flag and away they go. Down in towards turn number one. Great start then from the front of the row. And Zenit Babacek holding on to the lead of this one. Watch the outside row, what Jarlis Sayer can do from the outside there. Some cars getting spat out there at the exit of turn number two, but all of them getting round cleanly. But crucially, it is a fantastic getaway from the front row. Sector number two into another one of the uh, main overtaking zones, the second hairpin. That's a beautiful move down the uh, inside by the 814 of Oliver Warner. So yes, Oliver Warner has had a great start as well, Anthony. We said, watch out for him from P11. I think he's already got himself up to fourth place. No, we're going to get it straight away. Mello to the inside. He goes for the lead. He does not want to deal with the chasing uh, Warner and Newstead behind. Battle's happening and a change for the lead because Yannick Babacek now takes the lead through turn number two. That was just off camera there. Mello and Warner can now work together and use a double slipstream to really push them. Oh, no, Mello's going to go for it straight away. He's not going to wait around at all. He's going to go for the move. Babacek back down to second. Mello back into the lead of this one and uh, potentially puts himself back into the lead of the championship as well. 
This is the penultimate lap of the race. The last lap board will be out next time as now we go wheel to wheel. Babacek back to the inside here. He goes for the lead. Here comes Warner though, goes wheel to wheel with his teammate and he battles with Melo. Melo gets squeezed there into second place, but he holds on to that position. The two GGM teammates are fighting into turn number two. Switched back by Oliver Warner, who takes the lead. This is great stuff now. They've got to be careful here. It's five carts battling for the lead of this race. And he's leading this one by nearly six tenths of a second. How on earth has that happened? But he's made it happen here. Ollie Warner is on an absolute oh. charge to the outside. Babacek trying to go the long way round, but he runs out wide. He's out of contention. Zenit Babacek, it was a valiant effort, but it's not worked out for him at all. Melo still there in second place, but here comes Newstead. Newstead back into P2. This is the battle for P2 now as Green goes down the outside. Will Green holding on to third place, and it's looking good at the moment. Warner is fine and dry. 1.3 seconds further up the road. He's celebrating well before the start finish line as he makes his way across the line for the United Kingdom. It is Oliver Warner. He takes the first final victory in the IAMI Euro Series in 2024. Austin Newstead takes second place from Will Green. It's a British 1-2-3 in Mini X30 here at Zuera. And what a drive that was. Oliver Warner gaining 10 positions in that final. For your third place finisher, Will Green. In second position, also representing the United Kingdom for the BMR Restart team. Give it up for Austin Newstead. And then finally, your race winner representing United Kingdom for GGM Motorsport, it's Oliver Warner. Oliver, uh, a brilliant race for yourself. Hard fought, but lots had to happen on that one. How do you feel you've come out on top of the first round here at the IM Euro Series? It's a bit unbelievable. It's all a blur. Um, not really any words at the moment. But, um, it's amazing. I'm sure uh, you'll appreciate that suit now being covered in uh, champagne now, but uh, certainly a fantastic result. French quarter coming up next. Are you looking forward to it? Uh, yeah, hoping for the win again to see if we can get a championship lead. The Junior X30 category drivers aged from 12 to 14 years old. There were 48 entries from 18 nationalities from around the world joining us here this weekend at Zuweather. The displacement of this one, the 125cc engines, but very uh, precise there with the 123.67cc engines. 21 brake horsepower, so uh, more than double the power that these carts have got, but minimum weight of 145 kilograms. That is cart and driver over the course of this one. Tires, though, biggest one for these ones, the MG tires, not the Comets this time, the SH and the SW being used over the course of this weekend, but it will, they're only using the SH, the dry sets. Two dry sets available and the two wets over the entire weekend, but again, a lot of our drivers have been chopping and changing all the way throughout this one using their allocated sets. Championship standings at the moment, Riley Cranham leads it. He starts on pole position for this one. Tyke Butley with the nine points from Javier Barasca, Sam Woolley, and Thomas Pradier rounding out the top five. Benjamin Magnac rounds out the top six with five championship points. It goes on down to P10 in that one. Phillips rounding out the top 10 in the championship standings. But like I said, how did they get there? Riley Cranham, who starts this one on pole position, qualified P3, fourth place in his first one, did take a win in his second, P4 in that, and then he won his super heat. He had the eight points. He cruised away in his uh, super heat winning by more than five seconds. Tyke Butley, the Irishman, with a bad qualifying, qualified 13th overall, but came back in these qualifying heats. Best result, P2, he got that in his second and third qualifying heat, third in the super heat as well. Javier Barrasco starts just behind. He was your pole sitter in qualifying on Friday. Second place, a win and a seventh. Uh, P4 in his super heat. He has certainly had a challenging weekend, but he has made it work all the way throughout this one. Sam Woolley, who starts alongside on that fourth row, seventh in qualifying, second, a tenth and a third. He won his super heat. He's always been a driver that's been involved. 
Are we good for racing? The lights are red, the lights are green. Away we go. Good start for Cranham. Into turn one, he will lead. Good start for Buckley as well, as held on to P2. Down into the first braking zone we go then. Are they all going to be able to make it through? There's a challenge there for Buckley, and here, through comes Baraska. Baraska on the Buellart chassis there, weaving this way and that, trying to take the lead. But it is the number 24 of Ty Buckley for Mick Barrett Racing, leading off of turn four. Oh, well, there's a bit of an incident further back. One of the victory lane karting uh, entries in fold it's, uh, is Mulder, I think, the number 27. Yes, just Mulder. Uh, problems as well for the number 88 out there. So a bit of a scrappy start. That's Arthur Huang out of the race. Yeah, big shame there and a, a tetchy moment to get it done as well. Exit of turn four, very fast through that section. This is, we've got a change for the lead down the inside. It looks like Baraska's taken the lead of this one. He's been doing some great stuff in the 19 so far. And down the inside, good response from Buckley, fights back. And there we go now with the MBR train has formed. Uh, and now I'm going to happily say that this is a five-car battle here because Craigie's closed up now and it is five-car battle here as we go for the move to the inside. Pradeer takes the lead of the race. So it's Pradeer from Craigie, then it's Baraska, but not for much longer as Javier Baraska goes back to the inside, so close between him and Kenzo Craigie. Now Craigie under pressure from Harrison Mackey, but he closes that door as they go into the hairpin here at turn seven, but it reopens and Mackey goes through up into P3. Pradia checks over his shoulder. Look out, Harrison Mackey is on the charge once again, up into second place. Here comes Kenzo Craig again, though, back down the inside, and so does Toby Gale, both of them getting past Baraska, and he tumbles down the order now. He's into P5. Down the inside goes Gale on Craigie. Craigie oh. fights it round the outside. Kenzo Craig will not be beaten like that, but here come Maniac and Buckley. That brings them back into play. The top two have broken off the front now. Mackie and Pradir, this is a great opportunity for them. You saw what happened to Bobashov earlier on as now Gale goes wide and now Benjamin Maniac comes through and so does Ty Buckley. Buckley through, Gale down the positions. He drops down to about P7 now, P6 on track. Change for the lead, Harrison Mackey leading this final. Pradir not able to defend it and Mackey instantly saying to him, right, let's go. Uh, and he'd be absolutely fine. But if he has, uh, the problem is of everyone catching up, but he doesn't have to worry about that because he's going to take the race lead. Thomas Pradir down the inside through turn one, retakes it and now everyone's close in. Maniac's right there as well. He's right on that rear bumper of Mackie Buckley uh, and Gale are right there as well as they go down in towards turn five once again. The gap's opened up to the inside here. Oh, that's going to be shaky, but uh, Maniac goes through. Buckley's on the inside line. Mackie can hold it here and he'll have the inside line through six. Now we'll have to worry about defending. Gale to the outside in towards the hairpin in towards turn seven. Can Benjamin Maniac get another home victory? He looks the inside and there's the near contact there oh. through. Through goes Benjamin Maniac. What a move through turn four. Is the Spaniard going to take victory again in X30 Juniors into the next right hander? Are Buckley, Mackey, and the others going to get involved in this as well? Oh, there's a little bit of a touch there between Mackey and Brunier. They're side by side. They're wheel banging through turn 12. It's still not done. One more corner to go. Brunier down the inside. Has he carry too much speed? He's got the control. Thomas Pradeer's going to take it on the line, but here comes Maniac. Oh, Maniac on the line, He's and he it. takes it. Benjamin Maniac wins it with a classic at Swearer by 0.015. It's a home victory for the Spaniard, and he takes the lead in the championship. What a finish. in third position, representing Fusion Motorport for the United Kingdom, Harrison Mackey. For Victory Lane and representing France, give it up for Thomas Pradier. And finally, your race winner, representing Spain, give it up for Benjamin Malak. Benjamin, how are you feeling now after that uh, nice champagne shower? Um, very cold. I can imagine so. It's very windy here at Zuera. Uh, the final, fantastic racing from yourself. Super, super close. Photo finish at the end. How do you feel taking the win by, uh, well, less than a tenth of a second? 
Yeah, I mean, starting sixth, I knew it wasn't going to be easy. Um, obviously, starting at the outside row. Um, but yeah, I just, you know, I was really concentrated and I managed to just win the final. I kept passing for one by one and uh, finally I won. It was a very exciting final. You came out on top and uh, I believe championship leader as well in that one. So you're going into Branch Quarter with a big smile on your face. Are you looking forward to the second round? Uh, yeah, I really like Branch Quarter, my favourite track. So, uh, yeah. Another fast one for you. Best of luck for that one and congratulations to you in uh, this one here. And, uh, yeah, I'd want to thank my sponsor, Swiss Group. Um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them and my team, Brill Art by Ilbrand. X30 Senior is next. 16 laps for the drivers, 27 kilometers, a huge entry. 115 drivers started competition this weekend in Zwerra from 18 nations around Europe. Only 36 of them remain. Uh, the category and what they run with, 125cc, 123cc displacement for these engines, 30 horsepower, 158 kilograms combined minimum weight of cart and driver. It is the top class in IAMI racing uh, across the world. And this final uh, is due to be a bit of a stunner. It was a fantastic final last time out uh, in Valencia. Here's the rubber that they're running on. The dry MG SM compound has served these drivers very well. The wets did come out for one heat uh, yesterday at the end of qualifying, the long qualifying uh, sectors for the seniors. Two dry sets have taken them all the way through six rounds of qualifying and the super heats and the qualifying. They've got a brand new set for this final, so it's going to be full metal racing here in this final at Suera. Two wet sets that they've used across the entire weekend. One of them, as I say, being used uh, in that final round of qualifying. Here's your championship scores. Marcus Luzio, as we say, is top of the standings, having been the first driver in the intermediate classification. He secured the first 10 points in the championship this year. Danny Caronini, the Italian, is second on nine. Ruben Moya, winner here last year in the seniors, was dominant and was looking very good in the superheats earlier, is third. Adria Mustinez, the winner of the IAMI Winter Cup, that spectacular final in Valencia is fourth. Kian Geraghty was on the final for that podium as well as fifth. But the driver I think we're keeping an eye on based on what we saw this morning in the superheats, Thibaut Ramakas, stepping up from the juniors to the seniors this year. He was seventh in the final in juniors here at Zoera 12 months ago, but he dominated the superheat uh, earlier on this morning and is gonna be a threat there from row three. Marcus Luzio, you can see on your screen, qualified 13th, but dominated the qualifying heat yesterday. Didn't lose a single one. Danny Caronini, who qualified seventh, a second place, two, uh, three first place finishes, uh, a fourth and another second at the end of the day yesterday. Fourth in his super heat again. Ruben Moyer, qualified 36 yet finds himself on the second row of the grid. Adrian Mastines, the winner from the Winter Cup, qualified 10th this weekend. He's had two qualifying heat wins, a fifth, two third places, and another fifth place as well, and finished fifth in his Super Heat earlier on today as well. Certainly a driver you've got to keep a very close eye on. We are green, we are racing, and we are off here into Werder, and that inside line works amazingly well. Marcus Lucio holds on to the lead of it as they go in towards turn one. There's a cart off in the background there as they come through. It's the 250 that's come off the track. That was Matis Machout, who goes to the back of the grid. There was a spinner as well, just in the background, but they all get going. Ruben Moya there in second place as he holds on to that one, and keep an eye on it. It's Danny Caronini, who I think has uh, tumbled down in the order a little bit. I can't even see him. I think he's about down in 10th place or so. It's not been a good start, but I tell you, has been a good start for. Looks like Finn McLaughlin's got up into P5. That is the 240. That is Louis oh. Johnson cool. He was so upset after the super heat. He's going to be even more upset now. Such a talented driver who's uh, shone into the season here as a change for the lead. Mo uh, Ruben Moya now takes the lead of this race. Action back at the front though. Marcus Luzio is on it and on it he's done. He's gone to the inside. Finn McLaughlin is on a charge here. He's up to fifth place. It's down the inside goes Biasati. I felt that coming. Down the inside. Moya not quite having the speed at the moment. Lucio threatening to break away. 
Is he going to see a move here this time? Yes, of course he is. He waits for turn four. He makes them feel like the, you know, he's not caught up in towards turn two. He won't be able to do it here. Down the inside. Here comes Biasati again on Lutzio side by side as they go through into sector number three. Good attempt from Lutzio to hold it around the outside, but he has to concede. Now goes down back down the inside of Biasati. Moya's going to go through as well into second place. And Kin Garrity gains out of all of that into third. Marcus Lutzio back with the live pictures now. Now he goes for the move. Now Ruben Moyer thinks he wants to go it. Biasassi follows, and Lutzio down to third. He's got uh, Geraghty right there behind. McLaughlin is closing in. Utkon is uh, in tow as well. The most under pressure he's looked so far this week. He hasn't quite got the rear, but for Biasati, Biasati's got down the inside on Moyer to retake the lead through turn number four. But it's always been in towards turn number four in this final. Are we seeing a move again? Yes, we are. It's Moya to the lead. Luzio follows as well. And down goes Biasati. He goes down to P4 now, I believe, because Geraghty's got through as well. He's got a big slipstream. Oh. He's got a drive up alongside. Luzio's going to help him into turn one. Kian Geraghty takes the lead. Ruben Moya holds him around the outside. Biasate's down the inside of Luzio for third place. Kian Geraghty's in the front, but he's run deep. He's run deep through turn two. Gets it back under control for three. On the inside for fourth. The McConfins around the outside, but he's lost position to Utron. And they're all joining the fray now. Down through turn six, in towards turn seven. Here comes Moya to the inside. He takes the lead of the race. Here comes Biasati as he goes wheel to wheel with Geraghty. Geraghty holds oh. that inside line, but he runs deep. He runs wide. And Biasati and Marcus Lucio, they go through. Biasati wheel to wheel with Geraghty as they go round. But it's still Moya who leads the way from Marcus Lucio. Lucio there in second as they head on to the start finish straight once more. Lucio's got the inside line, but Moya's got to watch out. Out here as he's got the train, he's got the toe, he's got the slipstream. To the inside, here comes Biasati to second place as they go through. Tension building, you can cut it with a knife I, here. I think Ruben Moyer tried to disturb Lucio's run, but he read it. He read it perfectly, did the Briton back to the front of the order. But it's the top 12 now covered by a second. This is sensational stuff. McCoughlin's forced out wide. Oh. Jesse Smith's out onto the grass in the victory lane, carting round the outside. There's a bit of a breakaway now for Lucio and Moyer. Has out onto the dirt. That's that's uh, that's Oilo Gonzalez in the two. 1-0 and it's all going on here all for championship points but Lucio and Moya they're away back at the front Lucio Moya and here comes Moya to the inside takes the lead and with that they will just continue to bring Utkwan Biasati Geraghty McLaughlin back into play once more as once again they go wheel to wheel oh Moya's going to close the door on oh. him as they nearly bangs wheels there through the top section of the track Pushing his Tony Cart along there. Down the inside, big move from Utron. Takes second place away from Moya. Is this going to be Lucio's chance? Can he break away? No, the Frenchman is charging here. Retired as well from the final a few weeks ago. That is Clement Utron. Utron to the outside here, not able to get it done. Is he going to switch to the inside here? No, he's not. But Marcus Lucio, it could be a run to the line here. In towards turn 14. Out of 15 they go. It could go the way of the Brits. It looks like it's going to go the way of the Brits. Marcus Lucio, superb in the qualifying heat, and it's superb in the final. Three hundredths of a second separates himself from Clement Utron. But it is Marcus Lucio, your winner in Zuera, and he takes the first round win and is your championship leader at the end of round number one. Representing Spain for the Pantano team, it's Ruben Moya! Representing France, give it up for Clément Tron! Your race winner after an dominant performance for premium karting for the United Kingdom, it's Marcus Lucio! Marcus, a very busy final in that one. Certainly wasn't the easiest final that I think you were hoping for. Uh, talk us through that one. Yeah, no, uh, going into it, you know, we're a little bit nervous because we knew everyone was fast behind and especially the VDKs, they were really good. Um, so we needed to, to get a good start and yeah, we got that. Got away with Biasti, Geraghty and Moya. And um, yeah, 
turned into a little bit of a scrap at the end. But um, overall, yeah, no, it was really good. The whole event was really good by RGMC. And uh, yeah, no, superb all week. Was there one point during that race where you were slightly concerned there were 16 of you, I think, racing for first place at one point? Was there a little concern there at one point? Well, the lowest I dropped down to was fourth, so I didn't know there were 16, but now that you said that, they're probably, if I knew that, then yeah, there probably was, but not at the time. I had it all under control, and yeah, no, it was already good. Well, I'm sure you'll enjoy watching that one back when you realise how close to being in 20th position you were at one point. Marcus, I said, congratulations. Uh, well done on a near-perfect weekend here. Thank you. Well done to all the drivers here this weekend at Zuera for round one of the IAMI Euro Series in 2024. We're back in a few weeks' time at round two at Francia Corta in Italy, so make sure you stay tuned for that one. But from us here at Zuera, it's goodbye for now.